we've got our clear night so let's try to do an alignment uh, demonstration for you to actually show you how this uh, very easy to use telescope uh, can be set up in just a few minutes. Uh, we're actually demonstrating the 130p here um, which is one of the bigger AZ go to scopes in the series. This is the larger Newtonian uh, scope with a 130 millimeter aperture. Anyway, let's get started straight away uh, by getting the handset active. We've got it pl plugged into a power source uh, right now, so all it remains for me to do is, is make a start. So we press enter to move off the opening screen. Straight away we get a warning here about the safe use of the telescope uh, and advises you to avoid um, looking at the sun, so just take a closer look at that uh, when you get the telescope home. Press enter to move off that uh, option and you can see here we've got the uh, position uh, the latitude and longitude of the uh, current position of the telescope. I'm going to put that in on top of what's there already. I've already put the information in. It's very easy to do. Simply type it straight in, 000, 13 degrees east, I'm going with. Take it across with the uh, cursor uh, control key. 52 degrees, 28 minutes north. Nothing complicated about this. You can easily pick this information up from the um, Google Maps or some other source like that and press enter when you're ready to go. Time zone, I'm going to leave that set on zero there. Press enter. It asks us now to put the date in. Um, we're going to pick, uh, let's say, December and let's say Christmas Day. That would be a good time to be using a new telescope, wouldn't it? There we go. And let's just press enter and we put the time in. Let's say we're making our observations at 9 o'clock, so we'll say 2100 hours there. Nice thing about the scope is you can actually um, power the handset independently, uh, phantom powering as it's called, and actually take it indoors, use it in the house, and plan your observing session. Really nice feature of the uh, handset. Press enter. Clock now, onboard clock is actually running. Press enter again. Daylight saving time, I'm going to leave that actually set on yes for the time being and it's asking me now to begin, begin the alignment. And one for yes, two for no, so I'm going to select one for yes. Got a number of options here to go with. Well, the first one that comes up is brightest star. Now, brightest star is quite a clever uh, option for um, aligning the telescope. The only thing is we found that from British back gardens with trees and perhaps light pollution, it can actually be um, a bit chancy uh, selecting uh, the sky's brightest star. So it's probably safer to go onto the two star alignment uh, menu. A little bit easier and a bit more predictable because you're actually can, you can actually pick the stars that you want to use. Press enter when you've got that up and straight away it picks the uh, stars for us. I'm going to move across onto a bright star that we can see very easily over there, Duby. I'm going to select that by bringing it up on the screen and just press enter. It shows me the positions I've got to move to and I'm, there's a number of ways we can move the telescope. I'm actually going to use the cursor control keys here to actually do that. It's now asking us to choose the second star there, and the first one that comes up is Arcturus. I'm actually going to select another star. I'm actually going to select Vega, because that's nicely positioned uh, for where we are at the moment. Important point is you actually don't have to know too much about this second star. You've only got to be able to identify the first initial alignment star, because it's actually going to go here for us. And it's going to be very obvious that it's pointing at a, at a fairly obvious bright star. So even if you're not 100% sure where Vega is, uh, providing you're able to put it in the finder and then in the main tube, the alignment's going to be fine. And I can see that's coming around nicely and homing in on Vega. Vega's a very bright uh, blue star, very easy to find in the northern hemisphere. Here we go. It's coming around now nicely. And all I've got to do is just check it in the main finder. Just make a couple of little adjustments there to line that up. The little whistle tells us there that it's happy. Put it in the main tube as well. Again, just a couple of little adjustments. And when we're done, simply press enter. And straight away we get a nice little sign there telling us alignment successful. One of the great things about the uh, SynScan handset is that it communicates to you in your chosen language. So you've got a language option in here, you can switch it to uh, whatever your, your first language actually is. But it's obviously a great feature of the telescope that it communicates with you so simple like this. Um, escape from that screen 
and it gives us a lot of options here now. Identify, object catalogue, guided tour. Guided, guided tour is a brilliant idea if you can't think of what to look at. It's going to take you on a guided tour of tonight's best uh, targets. You can also um, hotwire the uh, option to get to these menus simply by going straight onto the buttons on the, uh, on the handset here. You can see we've got Planet, we've got Messier Numbers, we've got NGC, we've got IC, um, IC Catalogue and we can go straight onto it. In fact, I'm going to select that option now by just pressing the planet key there. And there you go. All the major planets, including the moon, on there as well. But all the major targets in the solar system, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter. It'll go on to Pluto uh, as well. Press Enter. I want to uh, take a look at Jupiter. Let's press Enter. Shows us the position. Press Enter again. View Enter. View object, it's asking us. Absolutely. Press Enter. And bingo, the telescope's off. So in just a few minutes, we've done the alignment and the telescope's immediately on the way to Jupiter. And there we are. That's that uh, basic uh, alignment we were promising you there. It just took just a couple of minutes to do. Uh, they really are magnificently simple telescopes to use and yet have also got the optical power and performance that would actually satisfy really advanced observers. Um, the basic models are ideal for... Uh, newbies into the hobby. Uh, they, you couldn't really go with anything simpler than the, uh, the AZ uh, system here. And again, the top models, the 127 and the 130 that we've been looking at here, have really got the optical performance that uh, you would really um, expect to be able to satisfy the more serious user. And that concludes our short uh, roundup of the AZ GoTo uh, series of telescopes by Skywatcher. Thanks for watching.